I hope this isn't the test that tells whether we're going to have Alzheimer's within 10 years. <laughs> Okay, for those of you who are watching up here, I want you in the three circles at the top to put what you saw me express. with both hands, but everyone on your sheet of paper, I'd like you to write down on the second spot here, there's a picture of a hand with a ball. Write down whether you catch and throw a ball with your right or left hand. Just put an R or an L. And then write down which hand you just used to write down whatever you wrote. When we catch it, it with one and throw it with one. All right, write that down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, we're going to do another exercise. We're going, each person is going to put their hand out in front of them at eye height in sort of a closed fist. And then uh, put your finger up and then line it up with some vertical line in, in the room here. It could be one of these columns or it could be a, or, you know, one of the lines against the wall. Line up. And now close one eye. And then open that and close the other one. And keep looking. Do that three times. And then you may notice that the finger will shift back and forth a little bit as you're doing that. Write down the, the eye that causes the biggest shift. Where it moves the most. When your eye is open. When you open it and you close it, which eye creates the most shift back and forth? Not completely clear on that, Doctor. No. Align your finger <laughs> with a distant vertical straight line <clears throat> as, a, as if a column or something. Close one of your eyes, open it, and close your other eye. Repeat this three more times. You will notice that when you close an eye, your finger seemingly jumps sideways. The eye with which you notice the smallest or no sideways jump is your dominant eye because it's the one you use to align your finger with when your eyes were both open. Okay. So write down the one that moves the least. Moves the least. Yeah, I changed it. So it moves the least. <laughs> <laughs> so write down which one you it up with first. Because you actually line it up with that eye first. That's your dominant eye. Okay, now, imagine kicking a soccer ball or punting a football or, or you know, if maybe you're playing kickball or something. Which foot do you kick with? Write that down. That's also a little picture there. All right, now, uh, everyone open up the, the uh, box and take out your flashlight and turn it on. Now, in our mouths, we have a little hanging down thing called a uvula, if you open your mouth wide enough, right? And, but if there's a line that goes down the top of the palate and down to the uvula. That line we're going to look at on other people. So you're going to pair up quickly. And the first, who's A's? A, choose an A, a person at the group. A and B, okay? So A is going to go, ah, really loud, all right? And B is going to look and see if the line turns to the left or to the right at the bottom. Well, but how do you define left? Who's who's left? Uh, the the left of the of that individual who has the mouth open. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 say it really loud. Say it really loud. Uh, Switch off. Switch off. All right. All right. Your turn. Yeah. 
It might not shift. It might just stay straight. Great. It might stay straight. Okay. All right. Very good. Did you get that done? We're playing a little doctor here today. Everyone likes to play doctor. This is my team doctor. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. If you didn't finish that, if you didn't finish that, just we'll move on to the next thing now. I want you to think about your smell. If there's something that you have, smell the right side and use your left nostril. Use your right nostril, use your left nostril to smell something. See if one is stronger, more able to smell than the other. Able to detect something. Okay. And write it down, which one is dominant? Which one is easier to smell with? It doesn't matter whether you broke your nose or whatever. Okay, so today, as you can tell, I've been focusing on your brain and how the brain works. Now, in acupuncture, the brain and the brainstem are associated with winter time. And so that's why we're doing this, because we are still in winter. So it's appropriate from that standpoint. But I also, um, in pre-publication phase of my book, Super Brain, Maximize Your Brain Health for a Better Life. So I'm focusing on some of the things that we do in a neurological evaluation to see if someone's brain is operating in an even and a balanced fashion. Now, um, these particular tests I go through are all part of a comprehensive testing that I do in my office to evaluate and create treatment plans for people with ADHD, ADD, which is Attention Deficit Disorder, autism, dyslexia, memory loss, Parkinson's, and prevention of dementia and Alzheimer's. So, stress, trauma, and toxicity, STT, here on your little cheat sheet, STT, stress, trauma, and toxicity are three main things that affect everyone's body and cause health problems. Any anomalies in the functions that we tested may come from any of these three. So, what we want to see, in general, each of us has a dominance, a right or left side dominance as far as using our hands and feet. Did you notice that most everything is on the same side, the dominance? If not, that can indicate an imbalance in the way your brain is set up. That can create other problems. Um, we have two sides. And both sides of the brain have particular functions. And so specialized functions are usually associated on one side and on the other side because they need to be working together. But anyone ever flown in an airplane with two engines? Engine on each wing? Well, what would happen if one of the engines was going faster than the other? It'd be circling around, right? You couldn't go straight forward. And so the brain is the same thing. They have to be coordinated on the two sides. <clears throat> now, I had you all look at, watch my face because nonverbal communication is 80% of communication. And nonverbal communication is dominated by the right side of the brain. The first two years of our development, the right side of the brain is working harder and developing more than the left side. Because nonverbal communication is a key component of speaking. And language, if someone has de developmental delays in speaking, it may be that their right side is not getting developed well enough. And if you can't speak well, it's hard to have good social interaction. So autistic behavior, etc., can come from this decreased right brain development and thus a decrease in the ability to read cues, nonverbal cues. So what other kinds of things can happen if the brain is not developed equally and properly on both sides. Well, people can get acid reflux. You could also have erectile dysfunction. Well, the men, not the women. Um, high blood pressure, increased cholesterol, allergies from food or otherwise, dry eyes and mouth, sleep problems, depression, memory problems, and autoimmune disorders. All these can come from the fact that one side of the brain is developed more than the other. And so in my practice, we also are working with people to help 
rebalance those brain, the two sides and the weaknesses on one side or the other. So I I didn't, unfortunately, I don't think I made enough of these, but here's a little summary of my target market on the back, as well as what the right and left sides of the brains um, work on most. So I appreciate your attention, and I think that's my time. Thank you. And if there's anyone you know who has brain issues, autism, or is wanting to prevent dementia, please pass this card on to them. If they buy my book pre-publication, then they get a lot of free testing. Thank you.